Okay guys, let's see if I can get another video in today. All right, I have got myself here a IVAC X20. I am not sure, it's like a stick vacuum. I'm sure it's, um, maybe it's a copy of uh, Dyson or something similar. And what do we got here? Oh, Godfrey's. Well, there you go, it's got a Godfrey's little guarantee on it. Could be a Godfrey's home brand, I don't know. I don't know much about this thing. Um, all I do know is uh, I got it for nothing and it does not work. So, all right, let's uh, pull this apart and see what we can find. Okay, so I found a little bit, uh, found out a little bit more about this. Um, it looks like it's made for Godfrey's uh, over in China. It's um, definitely an IVAC X20 and just a lithium ion. It's a it's a lightweight stick vacuum, and I guess you'd um, say it was in the. Uh, it, it's sort of modelled loosely on a Dyson. I won't say directly because I might get in trouble. Okay, so once you take that... Oh, I don't know. How does that come off? Okay, thought that was going to be an easy one, but no, there we go. All right, that looks like a safety cone. <laughs> All right. Okay, some sort of filter in there. Yep, okay, that's... Very basic filter. That's going to go straight to <laughs> the pool room. Yeah, right. Okay, so there were five um, screws. They're all Phillips head. Um, yeah, look, there's a couple more. I'm going to just... There's a couple more Phillips head. I'm going to pull pull a few more Phillips heads out and see what happens. I'll check underneath this um, tag. Uh, see if I can feel anything. No, I can't feel any hidden screws. I'd say this thing, once I pull enough screws, it's just going to fall apart my hands. Yeah, all right, we'll see how we go. Okay, so it uh, didn't quite fall apart my hands. It was uh, being held together by a sticker and also the top section. There's three Phillips head screws, evenly spaced, if you can see those. Um, yeah, I'll pull them out and see what happens. All right, so I finally figured it out. It's a little bit reluctant, but uh, it turns out that you turn that in an anti-clock with the end cap, the back cap in an anti-clockwise direction, and it should come off. However, mine need a little bit of persuasion. But you know, got him in the end. Okay, so then there's a Phillips head there and a oh, I believe that's an Allen key. Uh I'll tell you what, I'll uh, work out what that is, what size that is, and I'll get back to you in a sec. All right, so the uh, best fit in the metric sizes was the three mil, and it seemed not too bad. It came out okay. It was only into plastic. It was probably a tiny bit loose, but that's probably more to do with the quality of the screws. They um, seem quite cheaply made. All right, so let's have a bit of a reveal. A little bit of um, a little bit of filter there. All right. Oh, what have we got here? That that does indeed look lithium iron and 18.5 volts okay we've got a battery pack here and oh it looks like yep separates into two um this thing was uh quite oh it's got a little tiny vacuum in there oh, vacuum motor oh that's going to be a little bit of fun all right well um, i'm going to pull that apart and oh, yep runs on circuitry okay uh, one thing I found with lithium-ion is that they are only really as good as the BMS or battery management system. Uh, quite often the battery management system is designed to fail after X amount of charges. So even though the batteries might still be okay, the actual board, for legal reasons and safety reasons, won't charge anymore because it's had its lifetime use. All right, usually it's around about a thousand cycles, so... Um, Okay, then I'm going to have a bit more. Oh, there we go. There's another Phillips head in there. That'll get most of that plastic done. But the real weight of it is just in there. So that's really the meat and potatoes of it all, plus a little bit of aluminium tube from the actual, um, from the, oh, what do you call it? The, oh, lack of words. What do you call this thing? The stick or the, the, uh, no, I have lost words. Okay, so. All right, let's pull that apart and see how we go. All right, so the um, Phillips heads, Phillips head screws on the top here were quite obvious. 
Oh, very easy to spot. They came out quite easily. Uh, this wouldn't come apart until I found... Where is it? Uh, okay, so there is a... Um, this is where the connector... And that word I was looking for is attachment, I guess you'd call it. So, oh, okay. So there's a connector that attaches to the attachment or the nozzle. Oh, there we go, nozzle. All right. Um, and then once that's out, then you can... Oh, you can just see a Phillips head screw down there. So that's what I need to take out to get these these bits apart. Okay, I'm normally pretty good at taking apart these 3D jigsaw puzzles or the uh, reverse engineering part, but it turns out that I don't have the patience for it today or I'm not too sure what's going on. I'm normally a little bit better than this. Um, yeah, it turns out that that, um, that semi-cone-shaped cover comes off and then there's some very simple Phillips head screws there. Okay, once I've dealt with that, I'll get onto the motor and battery pack. All right, now we've got the battery pack apart at last, uh, or at least that's done. All right, so I have um, undone the cage that hold it all together. There's three screws for that, and then one small, all three Phillips head, then one small Phillips head holding the uh, the circuit board onto it. Um, these are... 18650s if you're unaware uh, these are the second most common battery in the world the most common is the good old double a battery but this is fast running up as a number number two position um and this one's what's that inr 18650 so that there is usually so that's an 18650 and that's probably going to be a a 22 milliamp volt, so milliamp hour. Basically, it tells you the storage capacity. Um, so these are what you find in laptops, in and the old model Teslas on Tesla walls, um, that sort of thing. They're a very, very sturdy, reliable battery until you pull them apart, as in like penetrate them or like deteriorate. Um, the lithium is dangerous, guys. Don't muck around it if you don't know what you're doing. Um, there are. It's definitely um, safe ways. Don't put these in your normal rubbish bin either because they can um, catch on fire. Same with those disposable vapes. They cause so many fires at um, at uh, solid fuel depots. And, and uh, yeah, basically when they go down the tip, they once they open up, they um, catch on fire and very, very hard to put out. So um, this one actually says, yeah, it's recyclable and do not put in the bin. Well, I don't know anyone who recycles in Australia. But um, yeah, there are there are special bin um, there are special bins outside the uh, Coles, Woolworths, and Audi, I believe. Um, just double check on that, and you, that's where you're supposed to put even your double A's, by the way, guys. Um, yeah, okay. Now um, each council will be slightly different, but I know that um, yeah, I've, with my bin that I chuck general waste in, I can chuck anything in there except for batteries. It's the one thing they say not to. That's because, yeah, they don't want to have to deal with that as well. So uh, these are, like I said, these are quite popular. Um, now, these ones, they do actually have the um, raised head. I don't know ex how, how raised it will actually be, but um, that's a bit of an issue when you're using these. You can use these for, oh, look, most camping equipment, recycled camping equipment. A lot of the, the high-end high stuff and the techie stuff, that they would use these rather than double A's, but the more domestic market will use continue using double A's because mum and dad go on camping, you want double A's to put in the into the torch or the mozzie zapper or whatever it is that you've got. But um, when you're a little bit more white market or a little bit more specialised camping, you get into these ones. Uh, you can go down and just buy these uh, and they come with the actual proper... Um, raised center. Uh, these ones are just a, a, they've got a raised center, but it's only very, very low. Now, these are spot welded with a nickel strip, which is very, it's just a standard that goes in the industry. Um, now, if you, if you try and solder them, you could, um, overheat them, and that's what kills batteries. Heat's one of the main things that kills it. Heat and water or any sort of liquid. All right. So, uh, they are quite reusable. Um, each one of those, what you'll find is where you have them in um, series, uh, which is the opposite of parallel, because I don't know if you know your seesaw and your your volts and your amps, but um, you either have them all, the positives together, or you have them end-to-end, -end, negative, positive, positive, negative, uh, and then that ramps up the voltage rather than the amperage. 
Okay, so with these, they are spot welded with a nickel strip joining them um, at the factory. And you, there are plans on the internet. Uh, you can go to different hobby sites and um, plan, um, actually make one out of capacitors, so it's actually quite safe. The other thing, because you can't really solder these nickel strips on, but if you wanted to actually make a solid battery pack like this, this is um, when, you, uh, when you want to actually fix power tools like battery operated tools they may have these in them or they may have something similar or they have a sub c which is a different one again which is like a smaller c size it's like a c size but slightly smaller that was the old nickads had um the old dewalt nickads they had heap that a lot of stuff in the 80s and 90s had um sub c's in them that was very very popular for a while but uh okay i'm digressing okay so getting back to this um probably the safest thing i've seen is i don't know if you can use like a, a metal cement which is also um uh, conductive i think that would be the safest bet if you're going to make up your own battery pack other than that you can actually just do the same with the with the um with the same cement you could actually then put a cap on these uh, whether you uh <laughs> get one from a donor double a or whether you got some of these that are dead you also find that when they are in um series that's what i meant to say before uh you'll find that when they start to fail it's usually the one on each end which is starting to fail and the ones in the middle are usually in good nick um yeah look plus also the heavier they are the more storage capacity they have because of the more um the more metal in there they actually stall the uh the electric charge okay that's probably enough on that i might do a proper video on the 18650s later on all right the motor itself okay it'll be a dc um yep okay 18.5 volt and that is the symbol for dc and a uh, 100 watts all right so that's a handy little motor to have so i might try and salvage that motor as a motor this should come up once i get this rubber off in fact i might you never know could work yep okay so that's probably going to be a simple little task to unclip that i'll use both hands for that and i'll show you in a minute all right so i finally got all that apart i had a little bit of trouble getting the um the little aluminium uh attachment off there it turned out that that uh, shaft had uh had got a little bit of lip on it and all they i think they call the engineers call it mushrooming effect it just got knocked a little bit so i just had to tap that down and pull it off all right now this one here um, I, th I was hoping it was brushless and they just seem to be way less maintenance, but no, it's got brushes in there. It's got tiny little brushes in the, I believe it's a commuter or something. Anyway, I can't remember, I can't remember, but yeah, this, so they actually go through and, um, attach through there. Um, well, maybe it is, no, I don't know. No, it appears to be brushes, but uh, I need to do a little bit more study because if I'm going to give you guys uh, information, I need to know whether or not things are what they are before I call them, are I? All right, so um, I might um, double check that and get back to you. Okay, little quick um, dive onto the internet and uh, yeah, I found out a little bit more information. Okay, so it turns out that being self-taught is really good, but you have gaps in your basic understanding, which you want to fill those gaps eventually one way or another whether you have um someone have a bit of a chuckle at you or or uh, you get a bit of red face but every now and again you'll um you'll come up against a situation where you realize you've got a gap in your basic education you need to go back and just cover that span that little gap all right so it turns out yeah this is definitely a brush a brushed motor because brushless don't have the coil and the commutator i believe it's called uh on it they actually have a magnet a um a programmable magnet inside that um can reverse polarity very quickly and you need to have a little bit of um extra electronics to run that to get the timing right on that okay but um the one thing i will say though is that little flat if it was um uh, because it's flat because you got the straight line and then three dotted lines underneath because that's flat that's actually dc so that's definitely an 18.5 volt dc uh motor um 100 watts is its limitation and even probably said class 120 but um that means that it requires no fancy electronics to run it you don't need a um 
a, ma a management system to run that. So that's probably what most uh, cordless stuff runs on because it just save on the electronics. This here would be your battery management system more than likely. So that's the sort of electronics you'll need just for just to make sure that um, you don't overcharge or overheat um, those little things and therefore they don't blow up and burn your house down. All right, so there you go. What you don't know can get you into trouble. So yeah. All right then, a little bit of information can be very interesting and it can also be dangerous if you don't know the bigger picture. All right, so um, I'm gonna uh, put those in my battery con storage container and I'm gonna go put that motor in a, I think I've got a milk crate full of um, these little beauties for when I try and repair power tools. As far as the actual, um, what I actually pulled apart, well, I didn't even get into the attachment. I haven't um, gone through it had a crack at pulling that apart but uh i don't think there's there's literally on something like that um if it's just just a pipe then yeah, that's all it is but this has got a um cabling if you can see it there there's two a plug connector that little ridge that means there's a cable going all the way down there so that's like a power head or something uh, what's it say there oh there's another one of those stickers from my trophy wall all right so let's have a look and see if I can read that. It tells you what it is. It's a power head to be used with the X20. There we go. It is a power head. Okay, that's because... Oh, my God. That looks disgusting. Okay. This one I didn't want to let sit on the doom pile for too long because uh, I don't want earwigs, spiders, ants, and things like that jumping in there and living in there because that's just cruel to them and also cruel to you. you got to watch it all and, and they're not going to deal with the actual... Um, the, depopularization in my shed normally they just go away of their own accord but uh sometimes i need to persuade them all right so um a little bit of aluminium in that is it worth scrapping not really unless you wanted the batteries or you wanted that particular type of motor uh now you know what's in there um you know whether it's worth scrapping for you or not okay it's Mm, I don't know if it's really, really good quality, but hey, if you've got a um, 18 volt um, drill or something that you need a battery to replace it, that might get you out of trouble. But I don't know how long it's going to last, and it's only got the um, plain shaft, so I don't know. It have to, you have to get lucky with the um, the fitment of it. Okay, um, all right. I'll put up some um, technical stuff on the. Uh, on the uh, description and there's another video okay thanks guys and appreciate you hanging in there only watch what you want to watch obviously and hope this was good for somebody all right see you guys well i thought that was it for the video but then I, as i uh, signed off I, I realized i've said the word power head and you know what that means that there's a motor in here in the power head right so pulling this apart was uh quite disgusting and um I do it so you don't have to. How about that? Um, there was some right down there in a, amongst all the couple of Phillips head amongst all the grit and grime. Then the little cheeky little buggers uh, underneath. Look, it's probably a good design, but where, where they've got the little wheels, I had to pull that up. And yeah, look at that. That's, that is definitely exposed to all the fluid and everything else. So yeah, that's... um. There's a, there was another one, well, there's still another one under there, but that all broke when I was pulling it apart. So I'll process that later. And here we go, we've got the little brushed motor. And what they told beforehand, hang on, just, uh, there we go. So, I'll get a big fat finger out of the way. All right, so, it's even got its own little gearing, but uh, printed on there. There you go, it is 18.5 volts, same as the other one, but it's only 15 watt, not the 100 watt like the other one. So there's a tiny little brushed motor. Okay, so that one's actually got a gear on it. Um, so smaller motor, um, smaller uses, but there you go. So out of that, you've got those two motors. You can see the size difference between them. I'll give you a comparison, and it makes it look bigger. Yeah, so it is actually, it's about probably a bit smaller than half. Um, there was one little piece, and that looks like, um, looks like, I don't know, you could just probably look at that and say, hey, that looks like ceramic armor, a vest for, you know, like a Kendall or something, I don't know. 
Uh, ceramic, a, a titanium bib. Who knows? Anyway, just caught my eye and I thought it was funny. All right, um, there you go, guys. Now, that is the end of the video. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Catch.